Okay. Assalamualaikum everyone. How are you all? All right. I have sixteen participants. All girls. Tanzeep is here only. Among boys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good, Tanzeep. Okay. All right, everybody. Starting uh, today with anticoagulants. I'm sure in your physiology, you have already studied about the coagulation and how, uh, how exactly the clots are being formed. Okay. So now we'll talk about how exactly we can... <clears throat> we can uh, stop coagulation, okay? We can stop the clotting, all right? So, in today's lecture, we study all of this, okay? So, the major classes of anticoagulants include heparin, fonda perinex, uh, then we have cumarin derivative, which we also studied in the last semester. Then we have herudin and analogs, in which we'll talk about these. Then we have angractroben, uh, angr and then we have um, uh, dabigatrin, atlexylate, misylate. Okay, so these are all. Uh, wait a minute, I have to pause the video for a while. All right, okay, so starting with the baron, right? Okay, so. Uh, I'm sure in the physiology, you have already studied about heparin, right? So when we talk about this structure, so heparin is a polymeric mixture of sulfated mucopolysaccharide. Commercial heparin contains 18 to 15 repeated units of uh, D-glycosamine, L-hydrogenic acid, and D-glucosamide, glucuronic acid. Uh, in order you in order you would understand its composition i have inserted its image like this okay so it's a polymer uh okay so the polymer is made up of l hydronic acid and d glucosamine okay so uh, i'm sure if you uh, look at the diagram look at the skeletal uh, skeletal structure of these compounds so you would understand them even better okay so uh, it is highly negatively charged at physiological pH this is a very important point right okay so low molecular weight parents are also available uh, which are these so heparin is synthesized as a normal product of many tissues including the lung, intestine, and liver. So commercial preparation are derivative derived from uh, bovine lung. Bovine is related to the cow, okay, and porcine uh, intestinal extracts. So porcine is related to the pigs, okay. So these can be derived from there. How about the action? I'm sure you already know about it. I do assume that you have studied this in physiology already, but we are talking about the, uh, that so that we can build up more on that, okay? So the actions of heparin includes that it increases the activity of anti-thrombin uh, by 1,000 fold. So what does it do is anti-thrombin inhibit activated serine protease in the clotting cascade, including 2A, which is thrombin, uh, 9a and 10a wait a minute so here i have inserted the image and literally if you would um, cram up this cycle and then the inhibitors you would know that what exactly is acting where and how exactly it is inhibiting the particular factor which we'll talk okay so uh, if, if you remember, okay, so we start with 12, 12A is being produced. These are actually the activated form, forms, okay? So 
9, uh, 11, uh, uh, 11 is converted into 11A, okay? And that's how the entire cascade happens, okay? Then we have 2A, which is like really important, okay? Because this actually helps to convert prothrombin, okay? It activates into thrombin. And if you know, thrombin is the major uh, factor which actually changes fibrinogen into fibrin. Now, what happens is this fibrin, this is the major crucial step, okay? That uh, you see, if fibrin, fibrin, fibrinogen is actually what? It is, uh, it is in the soluble form, okay, within the blood. So now what happens is when thrombin uh, acts upon it, okay? So what happens is that it becomes fibrin and fibrins are the insoluble thread-like structures which actually go and they form a mesh work or mesh-like mesh -like structure, okay, in which the WBCs and RBCs are trapped. More of the RBCs are actually trapped. That is why you see when you get a cut on your skin, okay, so a red-colored clot is being appeared, okay. So why exactly that is red in color? It is red in color because the, the fibrin is there, which is stopping the bleeding okay and uh, uh, it is red in color because rbcs are being trapped into that meshwork of fibrin right coming back here so antithrombin um, activated serin proteases in the uh, clotting uh, casket including Um, wait a minute, who is that? Who is asking? Mohammed Mohsin. Mohammed Mohsin, I don't know, beta. Who is Afifa Zulfikar? Uh, Mohammed Mohsin is really concerned about it. If you can please tell us who you are. Okay, Mohammed Mohsin, let's get, get back here, okay? Okay, so antithrombin inhibits activated serin proteases, okay, in the clotting cascade which includes 2A, 9A, and 10A, right? Okay, then we have a heparin, antithrombin, and the other clotting factors form a ternary complex, right? Like I said before, okay? So the clotting factor is inactivated, as we said before, and intact heparin is released and recycled in a catalytic manner. So some evidences suggest that Additional anti-clotting uh, factors such as heparin uh, cofactor 2 may also be activated by heparin. Then we have the lower molecular weight heparin act mainly via antithrombin to inhibit factor 10A. They have little effect on inhibition of thrombin. So, uh, if we talk more about the actions, okay, so here we have that heparin has a direct anticoagulant activity, which is that it can inhibit clotting in vitro. Uh, if you, if you remember in the first slide, I placed the tubes, okay, in which uh, the blood can be collected, right? So heparin can actually work in the in vitro, which means outside the body. So heparin releases lipoprotein lipase from vascular beds, which accelerates postprandial clearing of lipoproteins from the plasma. Postprandial means after having the meal, okay? This is again, I insert, inserted this slide um, so that you would know that how exactly what is acting, okay? So heparin, uh, combined with antithrombin 3 would actually uh, uh, do the function, right? Okay. Now, pharmacological properties. Heparin must be given parenterally by slow infusion or deep subcutaneous injection. It is not injected intramuscularly because of the potential of hematoma formation. Then we have uh, the half-life of heparin is dose-dependent. The principal advantage of the low molecular weight 
depends is a greater pharmacokinetic predictability that allows once or twice a day subcutaneous dosing without the need of monitoring. <coughs> Sorry. So, heparin is metabolized in the liver by heparinase to smaller molecular weight compounds which are excreted in the urine. Now, when we talk about the therapeutic uses of heparin, so heparin provides preoperative prophylaxis against deep vein thrombosis. What is thrombosis? Tell me in the chat box. What is thrombosis? What is thrombosis, girls and boys? Rabia said blood clotting. Yeah, good intima. Okay, so the thing is that uh, a, a, a pro, uh, in order to prevent, okay, deep vein thrombosis, okay, what do we do is we give it as a prophylaxis, okay? Furthermore, heparin is administered following acute MI or uh, pulmonary embolism. So, what is for okay? What is embolism, by the way? What is embolism? Is if you know that uh, thromb uh, thrombosis is actually a blood clot formation, right? So what is embolism? Giving you a hint, I have attached the picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you look here, okay, here it says pulmonary embolism so whenever the word pulmonary is there it means that it is related to the lungs okay and when we have pulmonary embolism it means that the lungs pathway is being blocked up okay uh, by what by the uh, by a clot okay all right so heparin is uh, then this agent reduces pulmonary embolism in patients with established thrombosis, uh, then heparin prevents clotting in. Wait a minute, somebody sent me a message. Okay, uh, I look, if you're not attending the class with your first name and the last name, okay. So please always after your question, okay, uh, leave your name, okay. I want you, Galaxy J7, whoever you are, okay. I want you to wait till the lecture would ever, okay. I'll stop the video and then we'll talk about the quiz, okay. I even want to talk about it, don't worry. Okay, coming back to it. Uh, so heparin prevents clotting in, wait a minute, extra corporeal circulation devices i think i told you about this terminology before that is extracorporeal what is that do you remember i think in the last few lectures we talked about this specific terminology okay let me tell you extracorporeal is actually a device which is located outside your body okay so heparin prevents clotting in the devices which are outside the body okay for example, dialysis machine or anything like that, okay? Okay, so adverse effects. Just imagine that throughout we were talking about that we are giving um, 
uh, heparin in order to prevent blood clot formation okay but what if the clotting would not happen where there is needed then what will happen just imagine right then comes up the adverse effects right because then we would not these are the places where we would not have the clotting where there is needed right okay so uh okay so the first ad adverse effect is bleeding is a common adverse effect especially in older women an increased incidence of bleeding is also seen in patients with renal disease protamine sulfate a highly positively charged mixture of peptides can be administered iv if bleeding does not abate after the cessation of heparin therapy now if you remember in the first few slides i told you to i i actually highlighted this fact and i ask you all to memorize that uh, heparin was negatively charged right so what we are doing is that we are and it was highly negative right charged so we are administering protamine sulfate which is highly positively charged okay so that let's just say that if we want to uh, stop heparin's action in somebody's body so it would be stopped quickly right so it can be administered iv right all right so the negative the next thing is heparin ca causes thrombocytopenia what is thrombocytopenia i'm sure we all know this because we had we we had because we had a uh, dengue right in the last decade which about which everybody uh, everybody talked reduced number of very good right so it is extremely low levels of platelets right okay wait a minute okay so heparin causes thrombocytopenia in 25% of patients and severe platelet reduction in 5% of patients heparin may induce antiplatelet antibodies and may also induce platelet aggregation and lysis right so it can act upon the heparin platelets badly furthermore wait a minute abnormally okay good zeneb rabia and uh cobra very good okay beta now heparin can cause hypersensitivity reactions including chills fever uteric area and anaphylaxis heparin may produce reversible alopecia osteoporosis and pre deposition to fracture are seen with long term use of heparin okay contraindication in drug interactions of course it would be contraindicated in in different uh, different diseases right in which the blood is already thin right the blood volume is not much and uh, where the rbcs are more prone uh, they are more vulner vulnerable right and it would be uh, contraindicated in other uh, and the drug interactions would be there where the other drugs would already exaggerate the effect of heparin right now let's read what are the conditions right okay so uh, heparin is contraindicated in patients who are bleeding internally or externally why why is that guys can anybody tell me about it Hmm? why is that why would i not give a parent to a person who is already bleeding okay high five to you zena very good so zenab has said that heparin can further cause bleeding of course 
because you see platelets will not aggregate right if somebody is taking your parents the platelets will not aggregate so that's why it can create more problems right all right so uh then we have heparin is contraindicated in patients who are bleeding and in patients with hemophilia what is hemophilia What is hemophilia? Hemophilia is actually a condition, okay? It's a very rare disorder, okay? Yeah, uh, and in the very good, Rabia. And in this uh, condition, okay, the blood does not clot as it should in a normal condition, okay? So, of course. In that condition, we would not give heparin to the person, right? Okay. Uh, then we have thrombocytopenia. As we have already said that this is related to low levels of platelets, hypertension, or purpura. Purpura is actually a condition in which the blood clots appear uh, within the mucous uh, membrane and on the skin. So the purple, purple small small draw uh, you know circles appear wait a minute somebody messaged me bleed more good okay then we have uh, heparin is also contraindicated before and after brain spinal cord or eye surgery right then we have extreme caution is advised in the treatment of pregnant woman however alternative agents that is Q, uh, Humarin derivatives are teratogenic. So, of course, we don't want to give the pregnant woman any of these medicines. So, heparin should not be administered with aspirin or other agents that interfere with platelet aggregation. Positively charged drugs such as aminoglycosides and some histamine receptor antagonists can reduce the effectiveness of heparin, right? Okay. Then we have synthetic anti, uh, anticoagulant in which we will talk about fontaparinex. Uh, okay. So it is a synthetic polysaccharide based on anti-thrombin uh, binding region of heparin administered by subcutaneous injection it behaves like the low molecular weight heparin in inactivating of factor 10a so it is approved for prophylaxis of thrombus formation in patients undergoing uh, hip or knee surgery treatment of pulmonary embolism and in deep vein thrombosis like i said before right so if you would cram up these flow charts so you would it will make your life a bit easier i would not say dyed it and paste it in your room somewhere because i hope you all know now that you have to do that uh in a patient the injury there is no blood clotting therefore okay then we have cumarin derivative right so when we we'll talk about its structure, so cumarin derivatives are derived from 4-hydroxycumarin uh, and, and that includes dicumarol, warfarin, sodium and uh, fenprocumin. Okay, tell me, did you read about cumarin in uh, pharmacocognacy? Everybody? Did you read about pharmaco in pharmacocognacy about cumarin? Because that's really famous there. Do tell me about it, okay? All right. So of these agents, warfarin has the best bioavailability and the least severe side effects, okay, adverse effects. So how exactly it's acting and its pharmacological properties are. So cumarin derivatives indirectly interfere with GABA carboxylation of glutamate residues in clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, which is coupled to the oxidation of vitamin K. 
I'm not discussing more here because I assume you already know here function of this. Then continued production of functional clotting factors require replenishment of reduced vitamin K from the oxidized form. This reduction is catalyzed by vitamin K um, epoxide reductase, which is directly inhibited by cumarin derivative. So, clotting factors are still synthesized but are uh, but, but at reduced level and are undercarboxylated and have greatly reduced biological activity. Clotting factors produced before cumarin therapy decline in concentration as a function of fact, uh, factor half-life. So this causes a latency period of 36 to 48 hours before effects are seen, right? What is latency period? Latency period is a period in which, you know, um, th there is a window after which the effect would be produced, okay? All right. So it does not affect uh, established uh, thromboid, okay? So when we talk about warfarin, so it is administered orally as 100% available, has 100% available bioavailability, highly teratogenic and fetotoxic with a half-life of 2.5 days. Warfarin has extensively 99% bound to plasma albumin and can displace many other drugs from this site. Then we have dicumerol. It's much less well uh, absorbed, a half-life of approximately 2 to 10 days, increases the potential of bleeding episodes. When we talk about therapeutic uses, so therapeutic uses of cumarin derivatives are similar to those of heparin. They also include treatment and prophylaxis of venous thrombosis uh, and of pulmonary embolism. Cumarin derivatives are also indicated to reduce thromboembolism in patients with mechanical heart valves. So these are also used to treat patients with arterial fibrillation whose risk uh, for a stroke is greatly increased. Adverse effects are bleeding is a common adverse effect with oral anticoagulants, prothrombin, uh, times should be frequently monitored. Okay. Warfarin causes hemorrhagic infarction in the breast, intestine, and fatty tissues. It also readily crosses the placenta and can cause hemorrhage in fetus. So, warfarin causes defects in normal fetal bone formation if teratogenic potential is high. When we talk about drug interactions, so we have uh, uh, amiodarone and sulfenpyrazone, which inhibits the metabolism of more active or foreign stereoisomer and increase drug activity. So aspirin and salicylate uh, increase for foreign action by inhibiting platelet function and displacement of our foreign from the plasma binding site. So antibiotics decrease microbial vitamin K production in the intestine. Barbiturate and rifampin decrease warfarin effectiveness by inducing microsomal enzymes. So oral contraceptives decrease warfarin effectiveness